Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hello, everyone. Hey, what's up, Pilot Lewis? Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, give me a second. Let me make sure the stream's running okay. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Seems like everything's running smooth. Okay, excellent. All right, guys, welcome to the stream. Um, going to be a little different today. I'm doing a real estate study stream. Uh, I think I've mentioned it multiple times before, but after I graduated from university or college, um, I went to real estate school afterwards, and I took all my classes, paid all my fees, and I got I graduated with all my certificates of completion. So now all I need to do is to take my ex test, to take my actual exam, um, my licensing exam, and if I pass, I get my license and I can I can sell real estate. Um, so I'm just gonna study. I'm going to go over the modules and questions. I'm going to read them out loud. And if y'all want to hang out and listen, feel free to. Um, just a heads up, you're getting about $1,000 worth of information for free. Um, just for the books and all of this, like my stuff I have right here set up that I'm going to be going through. It's about a grand worth of, I had to pay to get this. So I'm going to go through it. Y'all feel free to listen if y'all want to. And you know what? Maybe you'll learn something and you might say, you know what? This sounds really interesting. Like maybe I want to go into real estate one day too. Um, but I'm just going to go through each module. There's about, let me see. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's about eight modules. And yes, free education, exactly. Um, there's about eight modules we're going to go through. And I'm just going to go through each one, read the question, and then read the question. Uh, read the answer and then read the question and if i do this regularly i might like figure out some way to have something better than my world of tanks background playing in the background um but yeah no you're getting free education yeah you're getting about a thousand dollars worth of free um real estate knowledge um so if, if you're interested feel free to stick around and i'm just gonna do this for a while um and the reason i'm doing this is because I'm sick of my fucking job that I currently work, and, and don't get me wrong, I enjoy it, but there's a lot of bullshit going on at my work where people are getting promoted that have hardly been with the company, and people that have been with the company for years that stay late and work hard, none of us are getting promoted, and these certain people are getting pushed up through the through the company really fast and it's it's the same people in the same area that works in this little area and everybody else in the building is getting fucked so i'm not i'm not gonna do it anymore i'm tired of it so let's get started okay first off let's see let's see these are set up to match the chapters for the real estate exam prep book within each chapter there are terms that relate to the chapter topic do not hesitate to read back and go over. Okay, excellent. All right. So we're start we're starting on the first module, which is property ownership. All right. So let's get started. Let's see. At least you're you're doing and trying to do something with your life. Whose ass are we fucking? <laughs> yeah. No. No. I'm sick. I'm sick of it. So I'm I'm like so either I can go get another job somewhere else, but I've spent years at this company moving up where I'm going, and I'm just like, I'm done. So I'm, I'm, I'm mentally checked out there already. There's a lot of shit going on that I don't tell you guys about. Uh, bureaucratic, favoritism, uh, just real stupid shit, and a lot of manager turnover. So I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually use my real estate license that I paid for and went to school for. I just need to take my test to get activated. Yes, doggy style. So again, if y'all just want to hang out and listen and learn a little bit about real estate, and maybe one day you might want to do it too. But again, you're getting about $1,000 worth of free education right now. So let's do it. All right, so first is real property. Real property is land improvements that are t land and improvements that are attached to land and the rights to use them. So that's real property. Real property can be land or improvements that are attached to the land and the rights to use the land. So that's real property, a.k.a. real estate. All right, next is personal property. Personal property is anything not classed as real property, a right or interest in things of a temporary or movable nature. So an example, I remember from school, if like if your uh, oven 
is plugged into the wall through the gas lines, it's a part of the property. It's not personal property, but things like uh, furniture or uh, personal items that are not connected to the property. That is personal property. So uh, a chandelier that's hanging from the ceiling, that's a part of the property. Uh, a uh, oven that's attached to the gas line, that's a part of the property. Uh, if you have a barbecue grill outside that's like in, in the cement, some of the people have the grills where like the grills built into the cement, that's part of the property. Anything that's not attached is personal property. All right, next is chattel. Chattel is personal property, okay? So term right there. Remember that chattel is personal property. I might go into detail on these later. Let's see, personality. Personality is personal property, okay? Interesting. I wish they went into more detail on that one, but I'll I might go back into the books and put notes on this because um, some of these are a little vague, and I know it might be hard for y'all to follow too. So let's see. Fixture. A fixture is personal property that has been installed or attached to become real property. So there you go. Yeah. So for example, a chandelier, um, a, a oven, whatever, a sink. If it has been attached to the property it becomes real property and it's a fixture. So you see y'all are already learning. Annexation. Annexation is the process of attaching personal property so that it becomes real property, thus creating a fixture, okay? So if you attach personal property to the actual property, it be, that's called annexation. And, it, and that is, uh, yes, so that's when personal property becomes real property, is when you attach it and make it a fixture through annexation. All right, so next one is severance. Severance is real property that becomes personal property when it is severed from land, uninstalled or unattached. So the opposite of, give me a second. So the opposite of annexation is severance. That's when you remove property and make it in, that's when you remove real property and it becomes personal property. All right, let's see. Next is trade fixture. So, trade fixture is personal property that is installed or leased property for the purpose of the tenant's occupation or profession. Yes. Um, so, if, like, say you have, you've installed something on your property that's related to your job. So, for example, let's just say I, <coughs> I attach a something in my garage because I work on cars and I attach a piece of equipment into that garage. Well, that's a trade fixture. That generally does not go with the real property because it's a trade fixture. Um, it's still considered personal property, but it is attached. So usually if, if you have to go to court because of that, if you can prove to the judge that that fixture is trade related um, or is a trade fixture, usually they'll let you keep it. Um, but generally what, what my instructor and in, told the class is that before you put your property, l before you list it and put it on the market, remove any fixtures that you want to keep, because once it goes on the market, those fixtures are a part of the real property. So if you want to keep anything like say a family chandelier, a piece of equipment that's attached to your actual real property, um, do it before you put the house on the market. Okay. Next is Ascension. Ascension is gaining title to improvements as a result of annexation or fixtures. Okay, so I need to, I need to look into this one more because I'm a little confused. So Ascension, A-C-C-E-S-S-I-O-N, Ascension is when you gain title to improvements as a result of the annexation of fixtures. So I guess that's when you yeah yeah so that's what i was talking about earlier yeah so you because they're the fixtures are attached to the property you gain title over them so okay so it's a session all right good to know good to know all right guys we're about one tenth of the way through this first module physical characteristics of land so the physical characteristics of land are non-homogeneity immobility, and indestructibility. Yes, you cannot move land and you cannot destroy land. Um, you can move items on the land, but you cannot actually move property. So, 
For example, if I went and dug up all the land on my property and moved it, like all the dirt, I've moved the dirt, but the land is still there. I still own that property. Um, so that's what it means. Like you cannot move it and you cannot destroy it. If I blew my house up and all the, the land on my property, it's still that the property is still there. You, you kind of get it. The land is still there. You own that land going. Now, now, now here's the tricky part. Sometimes you don't own what's under the land. So you have to have that included in the contract. Because see, some people will sell land, but they're just selling the surface. They won't sell what's underneath where you own the mineral rights or the oil rights. So you got to be careful on that. Uh, I, I heard that earlier uh, in my class, a lot of people sold their properties and they didn't keep the mineral rights and they lost all of it, these families. And the same thing, people bought property and they didn't buy the mineral rights so they don't own anything under the house. So if I bought a, if I bought a new house and I struck oil on that house, digging a, a tree in the backyard, if I don't own the right, the mineral rights underneath the house, it doesn't matter. It, it belongs to whoever owns it. Uh, so that's a little tricky. you got to remember that. Non-homogeneity. This is a physical characteristic of land stating two pieces are stating no two pieces are exactly alike. Alike, okay? So non means not, and then homo means the same, and then genity is I don't fucking know. So again, non-homogeneity, no homo, means that a physical characteristic of land, uh, a physical characteristic of land stating no two pieces are exactly alike. Yes. So land cannot be. The same as another piece of land. <clears throat> Alright, next is immobility. Immobility is a physical characteristic of land stating that land cannot be moved and an owner must go to the land. Yes, you cannot move land. Let's see, Pat Lewis says, that owning only the surface part really could come in use earlier in my life. Yeah, um, usually when you buy a property... Make, sh make sure it, it states in the contract whether you're buying just the surface property or if you're buying the mineral rights too. Because what a lot of families will do is they'll sell, especially out in the country, uh, a lot of these ranch properties will sell their land, but they'll keep the mineral rights. So if they ever find anything under the ground, it belongs to the family still, but they don't own what's on top of it. They just own what's under it. Let's see. Indestructibility. Indestructibility is a physical characteristic of land stating that land will always be there. It is durable. Yes, you cannot destroy land. You cannot move it. It is, it is non-movable. It's indestructible and is not the same as any other piece of land. It is unique. The economic characteristics of land. The economic characteristics of land include scarcity, modification, fixity, and situs, or situs. I, I it's S-I-T-U-S. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but we'll, I'll go into each one uh, next. But yes, so remember, the economic characteristics of land are scarcity, modification, fixity, and situs, or situs. I don't know how to pronounce that. All right, so first off out of those is scarcity. So... Scarcity is an economic characteristic of land stating that a short supply where demand is great will cause an increase in value, usually based on geography. So scarcity means just think of supply and demand. The scarcer it is, the more expensive it's going to be or the value will go up. So yeah, so short supply where demand is great will it cause an increase in value. Interesting. Can you sell only the bottom part of your land? Yes, you can sell the mineral rights of your land if you want to. Uh, oh yeah, so but remember, all of this that we're going over is for Texas real estate law, but but some of it is federal real estate law, so it doesn't matter. Like some of it is just for Texas, but most of it is for the entire country. So we're going over federal law, which is the country, and we're also going over state law, which is Texas, um, which is for Texas. Um, so be aware of that. So we're going over stuff that is both covered around the state, around the state and stuff that is covered around the country. So just remember that. Let's see. Modification. Modification is an economic characteristic of land stating that improvements made by a man will alter the value of the land and the surrounding properties. Yes. So if I fix up a shitty house, modification uh, is that the, the, the value of the House goes up, but also the surrounding properties, so the neighborhood. So if I fix up a, a shitty house in the neighborhood, the neighborhood's value just went up. 
Can you tell me when it's federal? Yeah, I'll try and I'll try and mention that. The part we're doing is property ownership. I think this is state. I think this is let me see. Land use and regulations. So yeah, I'll try and get I'll I'll try and let you know what which is each. Uh, where are my books? I think this is federal right now. Um, but we'll, but we'll, but we'll, but it's good to know either way. Let's see. Okay, so next is fixity. So fixity is an em economic characteristic of land, stating that land, buildings, and improvements are considered fixed investments and not liquid assets. Yes. So. So land buildings and improvements on on the property are considered fixed and not liquid. So liquid means like money and shit like that. Situs or situs is an economic characteristic of land stating that location preference from an economic standpoint can cause increased value. Location, location, location. So for example, I think what this is talking about is for example, if I wanted to open a store, I would want the land near a, a road or a street. I wouldn't want to be back behind some some complex or something. Um, yeah. So yeah. So location. The uh, uh, let's see. And uh, yeah, situs is an economic characteristic of land, stating that a location preference from an economic standpoint can cause increased value. Yeah. So if I want to be, so for example, like I might have two pieces of land, but one of them's next to a road and one's behind it. It's just like. If I was opening up a store, where would I want it to be? I want it to be on the road. I don't want it to be behind another building. So that would be a location of that. Excellent. All right. Legal description of property. Legal description of property is a description of such certainty and accuracy that one can go to the ground and identify the land. A description prepared by a surveyor. Yes, you can have a surveyor go out and survey the land for you and make an actual legal description of land um that's what that's that's referring to yeah so the legal description of property is a description of property pre prepared by a surveyor you can actually have pay people to come out and do that for you i want to be in the middle of the road just so i have to see it <laughs> pretty much all right next is meets and bounds not meets like Beef, no, meats, M-E-T-E-S, not M-E-A-T. All right, so meats and bounds is a legal description of land having a point of beginning using terminal points and angles, degrees and minutes to outline a property. So um, so if you had a surveyor to come out and survey your land, he would give it to you in like the exact points, the exact distance um, legally. Yeah, there's there's a there's a beginning point. Usually on your property, there's a there's a metal plate. Um, usually, if you own property somewhere on your property, there's like a metal plate buried in the ground. That is the point of of where it starts, um, where that that measurement starts. So that's the point of beginning. And then using points, angles, degrees, minutes, it'll outline your property so you know exactly what land encompasses your property. All right, so lock, block, and subdivision. So lot, block, and subdivision are legal descriptions of land based on record recorded maps of a subdivision called a plat. So on a plat, you have lots, blocks, and subdivisions. So it's just how you break up, for example, a neighborhood, you know. So monuments, all right. Next, monuments is permanent surveyor marks, natural or man-made. Yes, so a monument is something that the surveyor uses to mark your property they're markers um so i guess when it's talking about natural it could be like a a, a piece of of geography a rock a large a large structure or something or like i said that plate that sometimes they put in the ground that would be an example of a man-made version of that okay we're burning through this what are we on 23 of 102 never mind we still got a ways to go but we'll get through there all right, so next is rectangular survey system. So 
A rectangular survey system is a legal description of land using baselines, meridians, townships, sections, and ranges, also called a government survey system. Okay, so again, I'll say it again because it's a little, there's a lot of information I just talked about. So a re remember, a rectangular survey system is a legal description of land using baselines, meridians, townships, sections, and ranges also called the government survey system. So just a form of uh, surveying land. Very interesting. All right, so next is government survey system. So it's the same thing as, as it's the same as a uh, rectangular survey system. So government survey system is a legal description of land using baselines, meridians, townships, sections, and ranges, also called a rectangular survey system. So remember, Government survey system also can mean rectangular survey system. Just keep that in mind. Do you watch Star Trek or Doctor Who? Uh, I like Star Trek The Next Generation with Captain Picard, Jean-Luc Picard. I like that one. But not really. I don't really like Doctor Who, and I don't particularly enjoy the newer Star Treks. I like Next Generation a lot. Okay, so next is Township. So a township is a part of, go of a government survey system consisting of 36 sections. So that's a township. Next is a section. A section is a part of a government survey system consisting of 640 acres or one square mile. So a section is a square mile or 640 acres. Star Wars. Oh, yeah, I like Star Wars a lot. Uh, I grew up watching Star Wars. Um... I grew up watching Star Wars in the early 90s. Uh, it's, I, I'm, an, I'm, an 80s, I'm, a, I'm an 80s baby, but I'm a 90s kid. I grew up in the 90s, and Star, I, watched, I used to watch Star Wars on VHS tapes, if you can believe that. Uh, but yeah, I like Star Wars the most. I don't really like where Disney's taking it. I don't think the new movies are fucking dog shit. Let's see. So an acre. So an acre is a measurement of land that is 43,000... 560 square feet so remember that so a section is 640 acres and an acre is 43,560 square feet there you go have you seen the clones the clones you mean the clone wars the clone war animated series yeah i've seen it i like it i like i like the clone episodes i really don't like the like jar jar and side character episodes they kind of suck Okay, a plat. A plat is a map of a town, a section, or a subdivision. Okay, so there you go. A plat is a map. Remember that. Not a platypus, a plat. The end movies suck ass. Oh, the new ones? Yeah, they fucking suck. The Clone Wars. Let me see. The Clone Wars. I like the Clone Wars animated series. I don't really... I don't like the... Um, I don't like the Rebels sh uh, show that happens after the Clone Wars. It's pretty shitty. The new movies suck. Oh, yeah, no kidding. Okay, so next is Plot. A plot is a map of a single property site, also called a lot or a parcel. Okay, so a plot is a map of a single property site, all also called a lot or parcel. So, remember, a plot is a map of a town... Or a section or subdivision. So a plat is a large map of a property, or or a, a, a town or a large section of land. But a plot is a map of a single property, also called a lot or parcel. So remember that sweet, remember that sweet child. All right, next is lot. A lot is a single piece of property, also called a plot or parcel. So remember, lot is a single piece of property, and a plot is a single. Uh, map of a single piece of property so remember that next is parcel parcel is a single piece of property also called a plot or a lot so parcel is also considered a single piece of property on-site construction on-site construction is improvements constructed or built on the land non prefabricated so you can't just drop a mobile home on a on a piece of property and then that doesn't account. So on-site construction is improvements constructed or built on the land that are non-portable or non-prefabricated. Off-site construction. 
Improvements constructed or built in a controlled environment and then transported to the land and installed on the land. Prefabricated, manufactured, or modular buildings. So mobile homes. Mobile homes are, mobile homes are considered off-site construction, where if you actually built a house on the land, it would be on-site construction. Encumbrance. Encumbrance is a limitation on the rights of a property owner. So just like the definition encumbered, encumbrance. So, so an encumbrance is a limit is a is to limit a property owner, the rights of a property owner. Cloud on the title is an encumbrance that causes doubt to the validity of a title and can prevent sale or transfer of title. So, if there's a cloud on the title, it might hinder the sale of the property if there's confusion or it's not, uh, if it's not clear. Release. Release is the legal method of removing an encumbrance to release it or get or to get a release. So if you have an encumbrance on your property, whatever you got to do to get it off is called release. Lien, L-I-E-N, is a charge against a property as a security for a debt. So if you have a lien on your property, that means that there's a charge on it as security or for a debt. So... Say, I think that that would be an example if you used your house as a, as a down, like, um, as insurance for a loan, um, that would be, you, your house would have a lien on it. Voluntary lien. A lien created by the borrower's choice, taking out a mortgage or home improvement loan. Yes, yeah, so if you ever take out a, a loan or a home loan or a mortgage loan, you're using your house as your security deposit and that you're putting a lien on your property. Involuntary lien. A lien created by an outside source, a law or court. Yes, so a law or court can put a lien on your property without you having any say on it. Okay, so a specific lien is a lien attack attaching to only one or more listed specific properties. So... So I guess... It can be determined to just be on a specific property. So that would be a specific lien. I'll, I'll look that up later and find out the details. Okay, so a general lien is a lien attached to all the property of a debtor not exempt from forced sale. So, so yeah, so for example, if the if the government was like, you're we're going to put a lien on, on your property, if they do it to just one or two of your properties, that would be a specific lien, but they can do it to all of your fucking properties. So that would be a general lien where they put it, your, they put it on everything. A statutory lien is a lien created by statutory law, legislation, taxes, or judgment. So, if you have a lien that is put on your property and it was created by law, legislation, taxes, or judgments, that would be a statutory lien. A little bit like statutory rape. Equitable lien. A lien created by common law through the courts. Okay, so interesting. Equitable is common law. And statutory is... Legislative law, okay. Just I'll try to remember that. So, common law is equitable. Statutory is legislation. Okay, I'll try. Remember, I'll try and remember that. Vendor's lien. Vendor's lien is a lien created by seller by seller financing. Okay, so if the seller's doing it, then it's a vendor lien. Good to know. Good to know. This is a very important very important information. Vendee's lien, V-E-N-D-E-E apostrophe S-L-I-E-N, Vendee's lien, not Wendy's, Vendee's. Vendee's lien is a lien used to protect a buyer who has paid and not received a deed. Okay, so I guess that's in place for when, again, you've bought, when you've bought property but you have not received it, the deed yet, then Vendee's lien would come into play there. Writ of execution, W-R-I-T, writ of execution. A court order to enforce payment of a lien. So if you have to pay the lien, they can do a writ of execution where you are forced to pay it. Mechanics and material man's lien. This is a lien on a real property or a secure payment for work or materials used to improve a property, an M&M lien. Okay, so if you need to use a lien on your property to acquire materials for improvements 
for work or materials on your property, you can do that, and that would be a mechanics and material men's lien or an M and M. Remember that M and M is if you need money for work on your property. Reservation. When a grantor withholds title to a part of land transferred by a deed. Okay, so that's that. That's an example of that. Yeah. So. So when you withhold a part of land transferred by a deed. Oh no! Excuse me. When the when the grantor withholds title to a part of land transferred by a deed. So. Okay, interesting. So that's reservation when they withhold title. Next is encroachment. Encroachments are structures or improvements of one property that overlap into another property. Yes. So if you build a, if you build an extension to your house and it accidentally goes into the neighbor's yard. By accident, that would be an encroachment on your neighbor's property. Easement. Easement is a right in land granting limited use or enjoyment of another's land. So, easement. Interesting. So, let me read this again. A right in land granting limited use or enjoyment of another's land? I guess if you... Let me see. Easement is a right in land granting limited use. So it's granting limited use or enjoyment of another's land. I'm not sure I understand how this one works. It's a right in land. So if you were allowing... I guess if someone was letting you use their property for limited use or enjoyment, I guess like if you rented, that would be easement. Interesting. I guess you're allowing them you're allowing them limited use. You're not selling them the property. Methods to create an easement. Express or implied grant, agreement, reservation, limitation or prescription, necessity, necessity or condemnation. These are all methods to create an easement. Interesting. I need to look. I need to look into this more. So an easement is a lot when you allow limited use or enjoyment of another property, and this can be express, implied, grant, agreement, reservation, limitation, or prescription. Okay. So this is just all the ways you can allow that. Okay. So I can just say, hey, you can use the land. I can put it in an agreement. Okay. Interesting. Good. To, okay. Now I understand it. Okay. Good to know. Methods to terminate an easement. Release, merger, also called acquiring the adjacent property and or abandonment. Oh, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. So let's say you live, like, let's say my house is in front of your house and there's a road in front of my house and you have to drive through my property to get to the road, to get out. That would be an easement. I'm letting you drive, use my property road to get through. Um... So another way to get rid of that is to acquire the property or abandonment. Interesting. I remember this from class. Yeah, I remember all this. Uh, Sev is coming back to where I live. And I keep telling him, like, if you want to do real estate, I'll do it with you. I'm already doing it myself. It wouldn't take any trouble to get him to do it with me. So express grant. This is written or spoken. Okay. Interesting. So an express grant is written or spoken, and an implied grant is an action or evidence, but not written or spoken. Okay. So actions are evidence, but not written or spoken. Okay. So a express grant is written and spoken. An implied grant is not written or spoken. Okay. Assessment by reservation. An assessment kept or reserved by a grantor while selling property to a to a grantee okay so i guess when you keep if you have an assessment done when you're selling a property but you keep it that's estimate by reservation or easement excuse me easement by reservation okay interesting on to the next one easement by agreement an easement negotiated by the property owner 
and the party in need of the easement. Okay, so... Did we cover what an easement is yet? I don't remember. Okay, I don't think we cover that yet. Easement by prescription. An easement acquired by, con by constant use without permission for a required number of years, usually 10, also called easement by limitation or prescriptive, pres pre prescriptive easement. Okay. So I guess if you use a property for like a long time, even though without, without, um, without permission, that can still acquire. So an easement granted by the court to a landlocked property owner who is unable to gain access any other way. Oh, I think easement is where, let, let me, I'm going to go through my notes real quick. I think easement is where they let you use property, whether you want them to or not. Let me see. Do I have this? Let me see. Let me go through my notes real quick. See, that's the only bad thing about these. Oh, here it is. Easement. Easement is a right in land granting limited use or enjoyment of another land. Okay. So we're we're gonna take out enjoyment because it's a little that confuses me. It's just a right that grants limited use use of another person's land. That's an easement. So we're going to start. Sorry, I forgot my, my mistake. So an easement is limited use to another person's land. And to create an easement, you can do an express or implied grant, an aggrievement, a reservation, or a limitation, prescription, or condemnation. Same thing to terminate it. All those again. So let's see. So express grant is written, implied grant is non-written or spoken. So easement, which is allowing someone to use property that's not theirs or yours, can be through, hey, what's up, LOL. So easement by reservation is when an easement is kept or reserved by a grantor when selling a property to a grantee. Okay, so I guess that would be like if I was selling my property and there was a road on my property and I was like, listen, I'm selling the house, but I'm keeping the road because I want to keep it for use. So that would be a easement by reservation. Hey, what's up, LOL? You should get Fallout 76. I'll think about it. Uh, actually, Fallout 76 sucks. I'm going to buy that shit. Uh, hey, welcome to the stream, guys. I'm just going over some real estate notes. Uh, I'm reading them out loud. If y'all want to listen and hang out, feel free to. If not, that's cool. I'll be streaming later today. Um, but... The information I'm going over, it's about a thousand dollar worth of about a thousand dollars worth of information. So it's free to y'all if you want to listen. So easement by agreement, an easement negotiated by property owner and a party in need of the easement. So if you need to use someone else's property, you can either do it through agreement where the property owner is like, okay, you know, what? you can use my road on my land because you need to. Let's see. Yo, yo, what's up? Nothing much. Studying stream? Yep. A whole new game compared to beta. <laughs> I still heard it sucks, but I'll, I'll, if, if it goes on sale, I'll pick it up. But just, I've seen the videos of it and it's, it looks awful, all the glitches and all that. Okay, so again, easement by prescription. So, remember, easement is the use of someone else's land. Uh, let's see. So an easement acquired by constant use without permission for a required number of years, usually 10, also called easement by limitation or prescriptive easement. So easement by prescription, if you use it for a long period of time, even without permission, it becomes usable, like, like a road. Like you can't cut the road off. We've been using it for this long period of time. All right, next is easement by necessity. Uh, let's see, gotta go. All right, no problem. Thank you for stopping by, plane rider. So an easement, well, excuse me, an easement by necessity is an easement granted by the courts to a landlocked property owner who was unable to gain access any other way. So yeah, so for example, if you own a property in front of my property and I can't get out of my property without going through yours, I would that would be easement by necessity because I'm landlocked. I can't get out. 
So easement by necessity is like, hey, it's necessary for him to use this 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 road on your property. Landlocked. Landlock is when a property is surrounded by another property in such a way that there is no legal access. So yes, there's no way to legally get to my property because it's landlocked without an easement. Easement by condemnation. So an easement acquired by the government under the right of eminent domain for the use by the government, utilities or railroads. Yes, so the government can use eminent domain to seize an easement. So the government can come in and say, hey, you know, we're taking your road. Fuck off. Have fun. Will you stream games later tonight? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to stream. Well, actually, Sev is. Let me, let me text him real quick. Take a quick break. We've been doing this for about 45 minutes. Let me message Sev real quick. Let me put, are you still coming down today? Let me see what he says. Uh, yes, I'm probably going to stream after this. Because um, it's already 11, so probably around noon. Yeah, I'll probably finish this off, and then I'll stream for about an hour. Um, not an hour. I'll stream at, like, noon for maybe an hour or two. Maybe, like, one. Maybe one. Uh, I'll stream Cryptarch for a little bit, and then I'll stream. Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Okay, no, he he is here. He is here. Okay, he's already in town, but he's got shit he's got to do. Okay, yeah, no, Sev's here, so, um, yeah, I'll stream later. He might... So, if Sev spends the night at my house, we'll stream his gun and battle operation as well, but I'm going to do mine for sure. So, yeah, probably in, like, uh, let's see, it's 11, 12, 1. Yeah, probably in, like, two hours, I'll do... Uh, Crypt arc, and then I'll do some gun and battle operation. But we're going to keep going through this. So. So easement by condemnation. That's the last one we did. That's when the government can seize it through eminent domain. For use by the government. Utilities and or railroads. So. If the government wants to seize your land, your easement to use for the government or the or utilities or railroads, they can do that. Easement appurtenant is when an easement that runs with the land, whoever owns the land owns the easement. Okay. So if an easement is on the land, whoever owns the land owns the easement. Okay. And remember, easement is just the, what is it, the right to use something temporarily? Yeah, let me double check real quick. I want to be double, I want to be double sure. Yes, an easement is... A right granting limited use of another's land. Okay, so yeah, so an easement is when you have limited use of another person's land, such as a road. That's the example my instructor gave. Okay, so if you own the land, you own the easement. Easement in gross. An easement that belongs to an individual or corporation regardless of the ownership of the land. For example, a, a, utility, a utility easement. So... So, you can buy property that has an easement on it, easement and gross, and it doesn't matter that you own the land. It either belongs to an individual or corporation. Interesting. What time are you thinking about? Please tell me the numbers approximately when you will like to stream. Um, let's see, it's 11. It's going to be 11 right now, so 12-1 probably let me see we're about halfway through so probably in an app probably in two hours yeah so uh two hours from now yeah because uh we've been we've been doing we've been studying for about an hour or 45 minutes and we're only halfway through so it's probably going to take us two hours to get through this uh module and then uh, I have eight more modules, but I might break it up into different days. Uh, maybe tonight I'll do another module, and then tomorrow I'll do another one. So we'll, we'll get through it. But yeah, probably in two hours. 
Uh, yeah, because it's 11, so 11, 12, 1. Yeah, I'll start streaming at 1. I'll do some Crypt Arc for an hour, and then we'll do some gun and battle operation afterwards. Okay, so next is Dominant Estate. So, Dominant Estate is property that benefits from an easement app appurtenant. I can't even read that shit. Okay, so a dominant estate is a property that benefits from an easement. So I guess that if oh okay, okay, so okay, so for example, like I said, if you have to use a, a road to get through my to get through the property, that means you would be the dominant estate because you're getting the benefit from using the easement. Interesting, okay. Damn, boss, I probably won't make it since I play games with my friends around that time, but I'll try to come as soon as I can. Good luck studying, my lord. I'm going to go leave. Bye-bye, duck lord. All right, LOL. Yeah, I'll, I'll post on the Discord uh, when I start streaming. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll stream at 2 then, and then I'll do Cryptarch afterwards. All right, next is Servient Estate, which is the property that is limited by an easement. So... I guess, like, if there was an easement on my property for the road... And, like, it's on my property, but you get to use it. I would be the ser servient one. If you're using it, you'd be the dominant one. Okay, interesting, interesting. Good to know. License. Permission to use another's property for a particular reason. For example, a theater ticket. Yeah, interesting. So... Okay, I get it. Yeah, so if you if you bought a ticket to go do something, you're using it for you're on that property for a particular reason. Oh, interesting. So that would be license. So good to know. Adverse possession. Adverse possession is acquiring title to another's property by occupying by occupancy that is hostile, actual, continuous, visible, and dis distinct for a statutory statutory period. Squatter rights. Okay. So, adverse possession is if you stay on a property for long enough, you'll get the title to that property, which is squatter rights. Interesting. Squat. Yeah, that's why you. That's why if you ever own property, like out in the country, you need to go and invest and go check in on it every once in a while because if someone's squatting on your property, living off it, like there's, I think there's a certain point where they, you, like it becomes theirs, their title. So you got to be careful of that. So estate is an interest is real property. Estate an interest is real property. That's not a, that's not a correct sentence, but what do I fucking know? Let me see. Oh, it's Jelly. What does she want? Send me the picture. Okay, give me a sec. I need to send jelly a picture we'll, we'll continue this in a moment let me see give me a second it'll just take me a, take me about 30 seconds to do this real quick Okay, done. All right. Duh. Okay. Wait, where did I put that? Let me see. That was I misplaced one of my one of my things. Give me a second. Where did I put it? Did I drop it? Oh, great. I lost one of my things. Ugh. All right, give me a second. Oh, no, here it is. Here it is. I found it. I found it. Sorry, I put it down upside down. My, my bad. Okay, so an estate... An estate is an interest 
in real property. Okay. An interest is real property. Okay, I might go back and look that up again. That, that, that doesn't sound right. Intermediate length. A period of time with no set term, termination date. Ownership of the freehold estate is of in, indeterminate length. So, okay, so indeterminate length is a period of time with no set termination date. Okay, so. Indeterminate length is a period of time with no set termination date, ownership, or the freehold estate of indeterminate length. So if you own something that has no end date on it, you have indeterminate length. You own it for, there's no end date for when you will not own it. Freehold estate is ownership of real property. So freehold estate is ownership of real property. Bundle of rights is a term used to describe how an owner's legal right in land, a right to sell, lease, and occupy, etc. Okay, so. So, bundle of rights is a term used to describe the owner's legal rights in land. Right to sell, lease, occupy. Okay, so the bundle of rights are just the rights of the owner that have been bunched into a single term. Interesting. Fee simple. Ownership with the greatest bundle of rights. The owner has all available rights to the property and can always pass it to his or her, her heirs. Also called fee simple absolute. So, so with fee simple, it is the ownership with the greatest bundle of rights. The owner has all available rights to the property and can always pass it to his or her heirs. It is also known as simple as as fee simple absolute. Okay, so they just add absolute on the end. Okay, so the the greatest bundle of rights is fee simple okay next is defeasible defeasible fee which is ownership with terms or conditions which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated okay i guess that would be if they put sorry my chair is so squeaky so i guess that would be if they put like st stipulations on your land Yeah, ownership with terms or conditions, which if violated, could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. So, if there's a feasible fee, that means that you have ownership, but there's conditions. That if you violate those conditions, you can lose your land, your your, your uh, ownership, the feasible fee. Okay, interesting. Next is conditional fee. Ownership with terms or conditions, which, which if violated, could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. So, ownership with terms or condition which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. Isn't that the same as the first one? Defeasible? Yeah, so defeasible is ownership with terms or condition which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. So I guess there's both, the feasible and conditional fee. They both cover the same sec the same thing. Interesting. Next is Next is qu qualified fee. So qualified fee is ownership with terms or conditions that if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated. Same thing. Okay, same thing. Qualified fee. Um Fee simple, defeasible fee. Okay, so real quick. Fee simple is the greatest bundle of rights. You have all available rights to the property. That's fee simple, defeasible fee, conditional fee, and qualified fee is ownership but there are terms and conditions that if you violate them, you can lose ownership. It can be defeated or terminated. So remember that. Let's see, next is qualified defeasible fee. Ownership with terms and conditions that can cause the ownership. Okay, same thing. Qualified defeasible fee. 
qualified fee, conditional fee, and defeasible fee. These are all where you have ownership, but there are conditions. So remember that. Defeasible fee, conditional fee, qualified fee, and qualified defeasible fee. These are all where you own, you have ownership, but there's conditions on it. Phone went off again. Give me a second. There's another, I don't want to go to work. Fuck that. Okay, so next is life estate. Life estate is ownership for the duration of one's life. Cannot be willed to heirs. Okay, so if you have a life estate, that means when you die, that's it for the estate. You can't give it to your, you can't pass it on to your heirs. So no one can inherit it, in other words. Life tenant. Ownership of a life estate. So, if you have a life estate, you're a life tenant. Remainderman? Remainderman? Is a person who becomes the owner of a property at the end of a life estate. The remainderman has a simple fee. A fee simple. Okay. So, if you're a remainderman, you become the owner of property at the end of a life estate. So, I guess when the person dies and you become the owner, you're a remainderman. And you have a fee simple, which means you have the greatest amount of rights. You completely own that property. Per ature vi. For another's life. A life estate held by one party for the life of, of another. I'm not sure how that works, but we'll remember that. So, per ature vi is uh, for another's life. A life estate that is held by one party for the life of another. Okay, interesting. I'm not sure how that, like, technically works, but we at least know what it means. Life estate with reservations. An estate set up so that at the end of the life estate, the property goes back to the original owner. Okay. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Life estate with reversion. So at the end of the life estate, it goes back to the original owner. Estate in Servalti. Servalti? Yeah. Estate in Servalti. Is ownership by one person, one corporation, or one partnership. So that just means one person owns that estate. Severalty. Uh, yeah, estate and severalty is ownership by one person, one corporation, or one partnership. Okay. Sole ownership. Ownership by one person, one corporation, or one partnership. Wait a minute. That's the same as estate and severalty. I guess it's just two different terms. So there can be sole ownership or estate and severalty. Interesting. I need to look these up afterwards. General partner. A partner who shares full responsibility and full liability. So that's general partner. So a general partner is a partner who shares in full responsibility and full, full liability. So if they share everything, they're a general partner. A limited partner is a partner whose liability is limited to the amount of his investment and who is usually not involved in day-to-day -day operations of the partnership. Okay. Hey, what's up, Igor? How's it going, man? I'm uh, I'm just studying my real estate notes, uh, letting y'all listen if y'all want to. Uh, if it sounds interesting to y'all, you know, if you want everyone to get into real estate, you know, you can get get a little crash course right now. We're just going through it. Tennessee in common. Ownership by two or more parties without the rights of survivorship. Unequal part shares are permitted. Upon death of the owner property passes to the heirs at probate. So. Tennessee in common is ownership by two or more parties without rights of survivorship. Equal shares are permitted. Unequal shares are permitted. Upon death, the owner of property passes to the heirs at probate. Okay, so I guess that like if you leave your property to two or more parties, so it can be like two people. Interesting. Okay, so Tennessee... In common. Interesting. Okay, good to know. Joint tenancy 
is ownership by two or more parties with rights to survivorship must be equal shares. Property passes from surviving co-owner immediately upon death to the owner, thus avoiding probate. So, if you have joint tenancy and the other person dies, you get ownership. Also, there's tenancy in common where there's ownership by two parties, but there's no right of survivorship. So, if the other person dies, you don't get their, their share, and it can be unequal. So, remember that. Tenancy in common is when two people own rights uh or own i guess own um ownership of two or more parties without right of survivorship so that means when one person dies the other one person doesn't get it and unequal shares are permitted upon death the owner property passes to heirs okay okay so yeah so if you own a property with someone else you have tenancy in common where if they die it goes to their their heirs their children but if you have joint tenancy if the other person dies you get the uh, you get the other half of the property Rights of survivorship. A characteristic of joint tenancy. Upon owner's death, his share passes to surviving co-owners, and heirs have no claim to the property. So that is right of survivorship. The poor man's will is joint tenancy. Okay, so... Real quick. And again, joint tenancy is when... When one person dies, ownership, when two or more parties have right to survivorship, must be equal shares and property passes to the surviving co-owner immediately upon death of any owner, thus avoiding probate. And this is also, also known <coughs> as the poor man's will. Good to know. Okay. Next is... Partition, which is a legal procedure to divide the co-owner's interest in real property. So, if you divide the interests in real property, that is partition. Next is property held in trust. Property held by one party for the benefit of another. This is property held in trust. Syndicate. Two or more parties join together to create and operate a real estate investment. So, when two or more property property when two or more parties join together to create and operate a real estate investment, this is a syndicate. Tenancy by the entirety is a joint tenancy where co-owners are husband and wife. Okay. So, so tenancy by entirety is when the co-owners are husband and wife. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. All right, we're almost done, guys. Give me a second. Do we cover joint tentis Tennessee? I don't think we did. Let's let's go through it real. Let's go back real quick and see if I accidentally skipped it. Fuck. Drop some stuff. My bad. Five. A second. Okay, here we go. Let me see. Did I cover that? Okay, so syndicate. Let me see. Life estate, life tenant. Okay, so here we go. Joint tenancy is ownership for two or more parties with right of survivorship. Must be equal shares. Okay, so joint tenancy is when you have equal equal when two parties have equal rights and they must be equal shares and there's right of survivorship when one person ends the other person gets it so interesting interesting so remember that so joint tenancy is when one person dies the other person gets it and
Okay, where were we? I think we were right here. Yes, okay, so Tennessee in entirety. Is joint Tennessee where co-owners are husband and wife? Okay, so remember, joint Tennessee is where two parties own the property equally. And if one of them dies, the other one gets it. If the other person is your wife or your husband, that would be joint Tennessee, but also ten Tennessee by entirety. So remember that. There's a lot of linguists, li lingo, and fucking vocabulary. Next is leasehold estate. An interest in real property giving a party possession without ownership. So... So I guess that's when you let someone live there, but they don't own it. I guess that's leasehold estate. Yeah, real property giving party possession without ownership. So you're letting them possess the property, but they don't own it. Next is a state for years. A state for years is a leasehold with a specific starting and ending date. A surv if it survives death, or the sale of the property. Okay. Okay, so if someone dies or the property is sold, you still have lease of that property from the start and end date. Good to know. Periodic tenancy. A lease that automatically renews for a like period unless one party acts to terminate it. Okay, so I guess that you could set it up for the tenancy is for periods of time and it will continue until someone ends it. So let's just say like a month, like, okay, every month, the period, that's the period time. But unless someone, one of us ends it, it'll keep continue until someone ends it. Interesting. That is periodic tenancy. Next is a state at will. A lease that can be terminated by either party at will without notice. So a state at will is a lease that can be terminated by either party at will without prior notice. So remember that. Holdholder tenant is a tenant who continues to occupy a property after the lease has expired. So they need to get the fuck out of there, other, other, in other words. Let's see. Tennessee at sufferance is... An interest, the interest in a property held by a holder tenant who is not paying rent. So that's tenancy by sufferance. So. Okay, so if the person is a holdover tenant, which a holdover tenant is a tenant who is continuing to operate, op, op, occupy a property after the lease is expired, that. If they're not paying rent, it's a tenancy at sufferance. Holdover tenancy is a is an interest in a property held by a holdover tenant who is paying rent. Okay, so if it's a so the difference between tenancy at sufferance is that the tenant that has stayed, even though the lease is over, is not paying rent, and the holdover tenancy is where they have stayed. But they're paying rent still. So that's a holdover tenant. Residents, the, ne the next one is homestead. Which is, oh, excuse me, I, I mixed them up. My bad. Let me see. This one should be 99. Yes, okay. Next one is statutory estate. This is an interest in real property that is created by law. So an interest in real property is created by law is a statutory estate. And then community property is a statutory estate that all property acquired after marriage is jointly owned by the husband and wife. Okay, so community property is... So community property is that all property acquired after marriage is jointly owned by husband and wife. So that's com com community property. So you buy a house after you're married, you both own it. Homestead. The residence property of a landowner is the homestead. So if you own land and you live on the land, that's your homestead. 
All right, guys, that's it. We did it. We finished the entire module for property ownership. It was 102 modules. We did it. It took us about an hour and 15 minutes, so good job. I hope you all enjoyed. Um, I might go through it one more time just on another date, but I think that was a good little section we covered. Um, let me see. Yeah, but... Um, Trying to think, should I go through it again? I don't know. Is anybody even watching this shit? I'm just doing it for fun. Um, let me see, let me see. Yeah, I think that's it for now. Um, I'll mark that this is property of ownership. And then... You're watching? Okay. Yeah, um... I was going to say, do you want me to do another, like, okay, so I, I'm, I was going to end the stream now because we did the entire module because there's eight. I have eight of them. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight modules. I was going to do another one or I can redo this one again and just go through it real quick and just read them, read them without, like, explaining them. Um, or I can end the stream. Cause I'm gonna I'm gonna stream some video games in about an hour or two, so I want to take a break and go eat. But yeah, you know, let's just go, let's just go through it one more time really fast. I'm just gonna read straight through them. I'm not gonna think about them. I'm not gonna talk about what it's talking about. I'm just gonna literally read the thing and then read what it is. So uh, let's get started. All right, and we're gonna do it real quick. It probably take us like ten minutes. So real property is land improvements that are attached to a land and the rights to use them. Personal property. Anything not class is real property, a right or interest in things of a temporary or movable nature. Chattel is personal property. Personality is personal property. Fixture is personal property that has been installed or attached to become real property. <laughs> Annexation. The process of attaching personal property so that it becomes real property, thus creating a fixture. Severance. Real property becomes personal property when it is severed from the land, uninstalled or unattached. Trade fixture. Personal property installed or leased on property for the purpose of tenant's occupation or profession. Accession. Gaining title or to improvements as a result of annexation of fixtures. Physical characteristics of land. Non-homogeneity, immobility, and indestructibility. Non-homogeneity. A physical, a physical characteristic of land stating that no pieces of land are exactly alike. Immobility. A physical characteristic of land stating that land cannot be moved. An owner must go to the land. Indestructibility. A physical characteristic of land, stating that land will always be there. It is durable. Economic characteristics of land. Scarcity, modification, fixity, and situs. Scarcity. An economic characteristic of land, stating that a short supply where demand is great will cause an increase in value, usually based on geography. Modification. An economic characteristic of land stating that improvements made by man will alter the value of land and surrounding properties. Fixity. <clears throat> An economic characteristic of land stating that land, buildings, and improvements are considered a fixed investment and not liquid asset, <coughs> excuse me, assets. Situs. An economic characteristic of land stating that the location preference from an economic standpoint can cause increased value. Location, location, location. Legal description of property. A description of such certainty and accuracy that one can go to ground and identify the land. A description per prepared by a surveyor. Meets and bounds. A legal description of land having a point of beginning and using terminal points and angles and degrees and mixtures to outline the property. Lock, block, lot, block, and subdivision. A legal description of land based on a recorded map of a subdivision called a plot, or a plat, excuse me, P-L-A-T. Monuments. Permanent surveyor markers, natural and or man-made. Rectangular survey system. 
A legal description of land using baselines, meridians, townships, sections, and ranges, also called the government survey system. The government survey system. A legal description of land using baselines, meridians, townships, sections, and ranges, also called the rectangular survey system. Township. Part of the government survey system consisting of 36 sections. Section. Part of the government survey system consisting of 640 acres or one square mile. Acre. A measurement of land that is 43,560 square feet. Plat. A map of a town, section, or subdivision. Plot. A map of a single property site also called a lot or parcel. Lot. A single piece of property also called a plot or parcel. Parcel. A single piece of property also called a plot or lot. On-site construction. If improvements constructed or built on the land, not prefabricated. Off-site construction. Excuse me. Okay, off-site construction. Improvements constructed or built in a controlled environment and then transported to land and installed on the land. Prefabricated, manufactured, or modular buildings. Encumbrance. A limitation on the rights of the property owner. Cloud on the title. An encumbrance that causes doubt and or validity of the title and can prevent sale or transfer of said title. Release. The legal method of removing an encumbrance. To release it or to get it released. Lien. A, change, a charge against property security for a debt. Voluntary lien. A lien created by the borrower's choice, taking out a mortgage or home improvement loan. Involuntary lien. A lien created by an outside source, including laws and or courts. Specific lien. A lien attaching to only one or more listed specific properties. General lien. A lien attaching to all the properties of a debtor, not exempt from forced sale. Statutory lien. A lien created by statutory law, legislation, taxes, and or judgments. Equitable lien. A lien created by common law through the courts. Vendor's lien. A lien created by seller financing. Vendee's lien. A lien used to protect the buyer who has paid but not received a deed. Writ of execution. A court order to enforce payment of a lien. Mechanic and materialman's lien. A lien on real property to secure payment for work or materials used for improvement of the property, also known as, as an M&M lien. Reservation. When a grantor withholds title to a part of the land that is transferred by a deed. Encroachment. Structures or improvements of property overlapping onto another's property. Easement. A right in land granting, limited use, or enjoyment of another's land. Methods to create an easement can include express or implied grant, agreement, reservation, limitation, or prescription, necessity, or condemnation. Methods to terminate an easement, release, merger, also called acquiring the adjacent property and or abandonment. Express grant, written or spoken. Implied grant, an action of evidence without written that is not written or spoken. Easement by reservation, an easement kept or reserved by a grantor when selling the property to a grantee. Easement by agreement, an easement negotiated by the property owner and the party in need of the easement. Easement by prescription, an easement acquired by constant use without permission for a required number of years, usually 10. Also called easement by limitation or prescriptive easement. Easement by necessity. An easement granted by the courts to a landlocked property owner who is unable to gain access any other way. Landlocked. A property surrounded by, another, uh, by other properties in such a way that there is no legal access. Easement by condemnation. Easement acquired by the government under the right of eminent domain for use by governments, utilities, and or railroads. 
easement by by appurtenant is an easement that runs with the land. Whoever owns the land owns the easement. Easement and gross. An easement that belongs to an individual or corporation regardless of the ownership of land. For example, a utility easement. Dominant estate. The property that benefits from the easement appurtenant. Excuse me. Servient easement. Property that is limited by an easement appurtenant. License. Permission to use another's property for a particular reason. For example, a theater ticket. Adverse possession. Acquiring title to another property by occupying that by occupancy that is hostile, actual, continuous, visible, and distinct for a statutory period. Squatters' rights. Estate. An interest in real property. Intermediate length. A period of time with no set termination date. Ownership of the freehold estate is, in, is of indeterminate length. Freehold estate. Ownership of real property. Bundle of rights. A term used to describe an owner's legal rights in land, rights to sell, lease, and or occupy. Fee simple. Ownership with the greatest bundle of rights. The owner has all available rights to the property and can always pass it on to his or her heirs also called a fee simple absolute. Defeasible fee. Ownership with terms or conditions that if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. Conditional fee. Ownership with terms or conditions which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. Qualified fee. Ownership with terms or conditions which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. Qualified defeasible fee. Ownership with terms or conditions which if violated could cause the ownership to be defeated or terminated. Life estate. Ownership for the duration of one's life cannot be willed to their heirs. Life tenant. Ownership of a life estate. Remainder man. A person who becomes the owner of a property at the end of a life estate. The remainder man has a fee simple. Per ature vi. For another's life. An estate held by one party for the life of another. Life estate with re with reversion. A life, a life estate set up so that at the end of the life estate, the property goes back to the original owner. Estate in sev severalty. Ownership by one person, one corporation, or one partnership. Sole ownership. Ownership by one person, one corporation, or one partnership. General partner. A partner who shares full responsibility and full liability. Limited partner. A partner whose liability is limited to the amount of his investment and who is usually not involved in day-to-day -day operations or of the partnership. Tennessee in common. Ownership by two or more parties without rights of survivorship. Unequal shares are permitted. Upon death, the owner property passes to the heirs at probate. Joint tenancy. Ownership by two or more parties with the right of survivorship. Must be equal shares. Property passes from surviving co-owner immediately upon death of any owner, thus avoiding probate. Rights of survivorship, a characteristic of joint tenancy. Upon the owner's death, his share passes on to the surviving co-owner. Heirs have no claim to the property. Poor man's will, also known as joint tenancy. Partition, legal procedure to divide the co-owner's interest in real property. Property held in trust, property held by one party for the benefit of another. Syndicate. Two or more parties join together to create and operate a real estate investment. Tennessee by entirety. Join Tennessee where the co-owners are husband and wife. Leasehold estate. An interest in real property giving a party possession without ownership. Estate for years. A leasehold with specific starting and ending dates. It survives death or sale of a property. Periodic tenancy. A lease that automatically renews for a period unless one party acts to terminate it. A state at will. A lease that can be, can be terminated by either party at will without notice. Holdover tenant. A tenant who continues to occupy property after the lease has expired. Tenancy at sufferance. The interest in a per property held by a holdover tenant who is not paying rent. A holdover tenant. An interest in a property held by a holdover tenant who is paying rent. Statutory estate. An interest in real property that is created by law 
and community property. A statutory estate where all property acquired after a marriage is jointly owned by the husband and the wife. And lastly, homestead. The residence of the property of a landowner. The residence property of a landowner. Alright guys, that's it. We did we burned through it. Took us a little while, but we finished. That is property ownership. So we covered the entire thing. So congratulations. You made it through. I'm gonna end the stream here. Um what's it called? I'm gonna end the stream here. I'm gonna go maybe eat some breakfast and then I'll be playing some games. I'm probably gonna be out with friends when you stream games later, so I won't be there. Alright, no problem, man. Yeah, it that's life, you know, it happens. I'm probably gonna stream in about an hour. Uh maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, probably in about 30 minutes to an hour we'll stream. Um we'll just play something random. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But that's it for the first section of the real estate property uh, for the real estate study stream. We covered property ownership. We're going to do another module tomorrow. This one was pretty fucking long, but we got through it. The other ones aren't as long, I swear. That's like the longest one. It's, I'm looking at it. It's the biggest, thickest one. But uh, thank y'all for watching. I will label this what module we covered. So if y'all ever want to come back and listen and study, uh, you're getting free knowledge. You know, usually you have to pay to, to learn this stuff, but I'm doing it, you know, just studying with y'all. But thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Mm, yes.